All right, let's go ahead and talk about foreign aid, which is very germane to mm. the topic. Now I get to actually voice my opinion. So <laughs> that, uh, that for me would have been the hardest. There's no way I could keep, have kept that's my mouth shut the way bite, you did. I you had did to a good bite job. my tongue a couple of times, <laughs> make sure that the camera wasn't on me, and I was like, wow, that's that's a wild thing to say. <laughs> hey, you know, it's not me saying it. Let's go ahead and begin with Speaker Mike Johnson, mm. who, in my opinion, is currently undertaking one of the greatest betrayals of his own caucus in quite a long time. And I will get into some of the historical context. This is a man who came into his job after the whole speaker fracas when Kevin McCarthy is kicked out. The right flank says that they're okay with him. He starts getting wishy-washy on Ukraine aid. He's like, yeah, maybe. And then the start the hawks start to go after him. And then we start to see some signs, Crystal. We start to see a little bit of rhetoric about, uh, oh, we got to stand up to Russia. And we're like, okay, and that's well, what does that mean? And then we see him flip-flop on FISA. And mm. when he flip-flops, he says, well, if you hadn't gotten the classified briefing I'd gotten, then you would flip-flop too. That's how you always know. That's how you know that the IC, the intelligence community, they got the little knife in you and they're starting to twist. And the money starts coming in. Now you're responsible for fundraising. And now all of a sudden, this man who had a very different record on Ukraine whenever he was a normal congressman is starting to talk like he's Ronald Reagan in 1982. Perfect <laughs> example. Actually, honestly worse than 1982. The level of grandeur you have to have to say what he said which we're about to play for you, is insane. Let's take a listen. We're in unprecedented times, okay? Um, We're in dangerous times, as has been articulated here, around the world and here at home. We need steady leadership. We need steady hands at the wheel. Look, I regard myself as as a wartime speaker. I mean, in a literal sense, we are. I knew that when I took the gavel. I didn't anticipate that this would be an easy path. Former Speaker Newt Gingrich posted a couple days ago on his social media that um, this is the hardest challenge that's faced a speaker probably in the history of the country, in the moment that we're in right now. He said, arguably, uh, maybe comparable to the Civil War, but maybe worse. Right. Uh, maybe comparable to the Civil War. Yeah. Or, you know, or maybe worse. You're just like Skylar Koufax, my dude. That, that's exactly <laughs> I right. I mean, he's practically um, Abraham Lincoln, yeah, if we're being it's honest not, here. Uh, yeah, d- definitely <laughs> Sam Rayburn and all those other guys during the Great Depression <laughs> and during the uh, uh, World War II, they never faced anything. Like, who do you think you are? Wartime speaker, America is not at war, except if you were one of these people. Now, apparently, we are. Now, oh, it's a, we are, we're fighting in Ukraine. We're the ones who are fighting in Israel. That is one of the best views into the minds of these ghouls that I've ever seen. America, which is not at war, shouldn't be either involved in either of these conflicts. And look at the level of passion, the way that this man talks to Crystal, about two foreign nations and the way that he sees his role in propping this up. And some of the details here on this package are out, I mean, just outrageous. Let's go and put this up there, please, on the screen. And I'm just gonna read you guys the top line numbers. The legislation that Speaker Johnson is pushing, $60 billion for Ukraine. We've gotten through this. This completely depletes U.S. military assets, U.S. military stockpiles. It is a gift to the military industrial complex. It will not change a single iota on the ground in Ukraine, except allowing the government to kidnap more people who are mentally disabled and physically disabled and throw them at a Russian bullet. Even with this, the Russians will still outproduce and outmatch the Ukrainians whenever it comes to ammunition. Two, $26 billion for Israel and humanitarian aid for civilians in Gaza. Now, who wants to guess the ratio of military to civilian aid there, yeah. Crystal, right? Okay, and then finally, quote unquote, eight billion for the Indo-Pacific. As a realist, I'm so insulted by this because it's actually a stack of the least the least priority for American interest gets the most money. The middle priority for American interest gets the second most amount of money. And the region of the world, which matters the single most of the U.S. economy, gets the least amount of money. And then that doesn't even belie the question of what the hell is all this money going to mm-hmm. do anyway? I mean, this is strategic Insanity. Yeah, I mean, with the Israel piece, it's once again, you guys have probably seen these photos where there's literal bombs dropping on Gaza as these little piddly food packages are dropping as well. You know, it just makes me sick. And it is so tired and cliche at this point. But I cannot help but note, they move heaven and freaking earth. Yes. When it comes to making sure the military industrial complex is fed making sure APAC is fed, making sure we keep these conflicts going endlessly because there is so much money at stake. 
They will come together in a bipartisan way. Joe Biden writing an op-ed backing the Republican speaker, Mike Johnson. They will do whatever they need to do from a legislative perspective, using all these procedural tricks of the trade to try to steamroll this thing through when it comes to forever war, when it comes to health care, lifting the minimum wage, dealing with homelessness, any other domestic priority, uh, we can't, mm -hmm. sorry, it's not our priority, we tried, it's too hard, we're divided, et cetera, et cetera. It's, it is disgusting. It's such an emblem of just how rotten and corrupt and out of touch and what a bubble these people are in and how pr how misplaced their priorities are in the most corrupt way imaginable. That is very well said. And look, this is sometimes a trite thing, but it's April 18th. How many of us are self-employed and just had to pay our taxes on April 15th, had to wire the IRS, had That's money right. taken out of our bank accounts? For what? And, and this uh, look, is what it's going and to. This is what we are paying for. Billions and billions of dollars, not a single change, iota of change on the ground in Ukraine, doing nothing. We are funding the deaths of at not even young Ukrainian men at this point, middle-aged Ukrainians. Yeah. I hope you. I hope we will enjoy the pictures of Ukrainian grandfathers who are missing their limbs and that the young men who are partying in Vienna and in Budapest and all across of Central Europe while we're the ones who are paying for the ammunition so that the people who are too poor or too dumb to stay in the country and who don't even want to fight are the ones who are thrown into this. On the Israel package, it's a, what, what are we paying for exactly? So we are assuming all of the cost of Israel's military actions abroad and now they're about to go and strike Iran. Who do, whose military do you think is going to be funding that bill? And like right. I said too, Taiwan, Indo-Pacific, these are regions of the country, Japan and others, they actually, or of the world, they matter. They actually matter. They're actually being shortchanged in terms of what would genuinely be militarily useful to them for these conflicts which mean nothing to all of us. And the craziest part is, this is a total uniparty takeover. Let's put this up there on the screen. Speaker Mike Johnson's plan relies entirely on Democrats. Let me be very clear here. This is a D GOP and Democratic plan to let this go through. It's a little bit convoluted, so please stick with me. Basically, what Speaker Johnson has done is he's taking these th uh, four packages. It's gonna be Ukraine, it's gonna be Israel, Indo-Pacific, and there's a fourth bill which is not yet out, which is some pay like for TikTok, TikTok, and all kinds of other okay. stuff. Okay, so let's let's just be very clear here. It's they're not together. They're going to pass them each individually. What he is doing is sending them to the House Rules Committee. The House Rules Committee, by tradition, decades of procedure, basically says that the ruling party is the one who is supposed to pass the rule to allow the advance of the vote, okay? Well, currently, the Rules Committee, one of the deals that was struck within the Republican Party was that the Rules Committee would have powerful members of the Freedom Caucus and others who would nix the Ukraine aid, even the Israel aid in some cases here, that would be of their makeup. What Johnson is doing is explicitly screwing over his own party members, working with Democrats and Hakeem Jeffries to advance this foreign aid to the floor and then allow votes where both parties, and this is another very key thing I wanna make, make clear. What with Ukraine, for example, a sizable part of the GOP uh, caucus is going to vote against Ukraine aid. Mm -hmm. A sizable part of the Democratic caucus is going to vote against Israel aid. What they're doing is a corrupt bargain where they both work for each other mm -hmm. and then they allow majority votes to come together and then they throw the little Taiwan piddly thing on the third. There was an excellent scholar of congressional procedure, Josh uh, Huter, and he wrote this this morning. I'm gonna read it to you, quote. He says, rather than simply allow members to sign a discharge petition or vote for a parliamentary question or other maneuver, Johnson has raised the specter of forming a procedural coalition with Democrats to overrun GOP opposition, potentially the most grievous betrayal of partisan politics in the modern era. This is a step further than the sins of John Boehner and Paul Ryan, who were run out of office just for using Democrats to pass spending bills. Johnson will now work with Democrats to snuff out opposition from his GOP colleagues. Reverse that as well. Democrats do not bail out Republicans when they don't have votes on the rule. They are doing it for this one instance, Crystal, so they can fund Ukraine and so they can fund Israel. We are basically, this is a color revolution. 
This is a uniparty war exception takeover mm -hmm. of all of our governmental procedure so we can send $80 billion to foreign countries. That's right. Yeah. Your tax dollars going to uh, put a gun in the hand of a mentally disabled Ukrainian who doesn't want to fight. Thank you. And to bomb babies. It really does make me very sympathetic to our libertarian brothers yeah. and sisters. So Dave, I've Dave never felt this way about taxes yeah. <laughs> before when I sent in my tax check, where, you know, normally I don't mind paying my taxes. I don't mind paying my fair share whatsoever. But when it's so naked, mm -hmm. this is going to fund more bombs to be dropped on a refugee camp or more bullets to massacre Gazans who are seeking aid, desperately trying to get flour. No, it's it's disgusting. And if the American people had a say in this, they would say no. But you have so much corrupting influence of money. You have the, yes, the deep state using all of their scare tactics to try to, you know, force some sort of unanimity, whatever that they did to Mike Johnson got him to flip on a dime. Oh, yeah, yeah. And I really think with him, part of it too, is he is so fervently, ideologically, and religiously committed to Israel that in order to get the Israel aid through, which is so important to him, he was basically willing to do whatever else he needed to do. And this is what the whatever else looks like. So since you had him on Israel, it only took a little turn of the screw to get him on FISA apparently, and to get him on Ukraine as well. And now, you know, this is where we are. Yeah, I mean, Dave Smith and Jank both yesterday, Jank in particular, he's like, if a single American goes to fight in this war, I'm gonna stop paying taxes and I'm gonna rally the people. By the way, Jank, I will be in the streets with you. Dave made a joke as a libertarian. He's like, hey, why don't we all just start now? I agree with you. I am very rarely the you know online libertarian poster. I am so hopping mad about this one because once again, if we were sticking with the way that our government functions, anytime, uh, let's say, what are our services? Is, Crystal, that you or I or any others, let's everybody just take a moment and think about a service in your life, let's say healthcare, maybe something like that, where you would like the federal government to move heaven and earth to make it easier for you. Maybe buying a house, your wage, how the your working conditions, uh, getting married, tax credits, I could go on forever. They are not doing any of that for you. They're doing it for a foreign country and they're using our money to do it. And they won't even use our money to actually pay for anything inside of this country. It genuinely makes me sick. And I mean, Israel is a wealthy, advanced yeah. they nation. They brag about it all the time. They have universal yeah. health care. Yeah. Yeah. We don't, right. they do. And we're sending billions to them. I, it's just, it's, so it's preposterous on that level. And then it's so outrageously immoral on the level of what we've seen unfold. And you hear the Biden administration, you know, worried about civilian life, et cetera, et cetera. How, you can't take them seriously when this is their number one priority. Um, we can actually put up there. The, the other thing that's astonishing is some of the arguments that they're making in, in front of this. Put A5, this uh, Wall Street Journal tear sheet up on the screen. This is the, the Biden op-ed that he published here. Moment of truth on Ukraine and Israel. Both countries urgently need US aid to defend themselves against brazen adversaries that seek their annihilation. One of the arguments that he makes here is directly about how this will help to fund and finance the American war machine, military industrial complex. Mm -hmm. He says, if Congress passes military aid for Ukraine and Israel, we won't write blank checks. We'd send military equipment from our own stockpiles, then use the money authorized by Congress to replenish those stockpiles by buying from American suppliers. Oh, Boeing, Raytheon, they'll be so happy. That includes Patriot missiles made in Arizona, Javelin missiles made in Alabama, and artillery shells made in Pennsylvania, Ohio, and Texas. It's just astonishing to me that they are affirmatively leaning into the pitch that, guess what, guys? This is going to go to our great military industrial complex suppliers. So it's not like the money even leaves within like 50 miles of where we sit right now. It's so naked and it's so incredibly manipulative and disgusting. Yeah. Uh, by the way, a quote just came across uh, my dad. I, I love this. Uh, from Mike Johnson. Here's, here's why he decided to flip-flop. Listen to this quote. Quote. I really believe the intel and the briefings that we've gotten. I believe she, Vladimir Putin and Iran are the axis of evil. Oh, Jesus They are Christ. in court. Jesus <laughs> Christ. Where does what this, year are we in? What, yeah, what year? I feel the Jumanji meme. What year is it? 
What year is it? Is, is it 1972? This is madness. It's complete madness. We have a, a video here uh, of some of the House Republicans who rightfully are furious about this. They were interviewed by CNN's Manu Raju. Let's take a listen. For hours last night and proposed uh, different paths for the speaker that would have avoided the abject surrender represented by his, his strategic choice here. There's no other way to describe it. It's surrender. It's disappointing. I won't support it. It's disappointing. It's completely detached from what our base wants, what, what, our, what our voters want. The strategy is not to try. I think the strategy is to fall on his sword. So when I asked Congressman Chip Roy about whether or not it was time for him to oust Mike Johnson from the speakership, he said that this is, he said he went right up to the line, Dana, and didn't go across there, that line, perhaps because he needs to talk with the speaker, which is happening right now. Now, the question is, will the numbers add up to oust him from the speakership? Because Democrats, as you mentioned, could step in to save him because of what he's doing here on Ukraine. So this is a different situation than the fall when Mario McCarthy was ousted from the speakership. But no doubt about it, Mike Johnson opening up a revolt on the far right with his conference, with this move here. So, yeah, I mean, screwing over your own party. It's just incredible. And finally, we have the word from Speaker Johnson himself. Went on CNN's Jake Tapper show, of all places, to make the case for this. Just listen to his own words. Look at the way that this man talks right now. And let's also not leave Trump out of this, because as Ryan and I covered, he was singularly important in making sure that this happened. Let's take a listen. Look, we know what the timetable is. We know the urgency in Ukraine and in Israel. And we are going to stand by... Israel, our, our close ally and dear friend, and we're going to stand for freedom and make sure that Vladimir Putin doesn't march through Europe. These are important responsibilities. A, a strong America is good for the entire world. Since World War II, really, really, the responsibility uh, for, for the free world has been shifted onto our shoulders, and we accept that role. We're an exceptional nation. We're the greatest nation uh, on the planet, and we have to act like it. And we have to project to Putin and, and Xi and, and Iran and North Korea and anybody else that, that we will defend freedom. It doesn't mean boots on the ground. We're not the world's policemen, mm -hmm. but, but we're gonna do the right thing. And I, I did tell the president uh, the plan on all of this, and, and I think he clearly understands um, why we're running this play and why we need to do this. I think this sets up the next uh, election, the next administration, uh, the next president, and I believe he's gonna win uh, in a better position. So Trump endorsed the plan, spoke with Mike Johnson. He's an idiot. So when he hears from Lindsey uh, Graham, when he hears from Lindsey Graham, it's a, it's a loan. Trump is like, I love loans, let's do it. Uh, and so now, now we're doing a fake loan to the most corrupt government on the planet. The aid actually allows you to cancel the aid, or to cancel the loan if you're the president. What do you think Biden's gonna do on day one? after this thing passes. No, not We're not never getting paid back. Not that it yeah. matters. We would never get paid back, whether it's technically dead or a loan it's or whatever. Of ways. course, it's not yeah. going to happen. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> listen, I never want to hear from a single soul ever again that Trump is some anti-war president. It's always been preposterous. If you looked at his record last time around, I mean, he was actually very hawkish towards Russia in spite of the rhetoric and the Russiagate, you know, phenomenon and obsession and derangement and whatever. It was actually in his policy quite hawkish towards Russia. He was consistently rolled by the deep state, by the intel community in the same way that Mike Johnson is here. And, you know, standing right beside Mike Johnson on the same thing. The last thing I want to make clear to people is there are really two reasons why this is happening right now, as far as I can see. Number one is Israel's provocation vis-a-vis -vis Iran, bombing their embassy, and then the inevitable retaliation that is part of what gave this thing momentum right now. So once again, BB playing us like a fiddle, um, getting his way, getting the, the A that has been hung up until now. So that's number one. And number two is what you just heard there. Donald Trump giving it the go ahead and you know putting his hands on this and saying basically, yes, this has my blessing. He's incredibly influential with the Republican caucus. They basically follow his lead on many things. And so I think the fact that it had his buy-in was essential to creating this moment. Sagar, I had a question for you, which is, you know, is this a fait accompli? Or is there any chance that Democrats don't want to go along, that they're nervous? Because I know there's some nervousness from some Democrats about, all right, if we pass the rule, that puts this in their hands. We don't know if we're going to get the humanitarian aid that we need to pretend like we care about civilians being massacred in Gaza. Do you think there's any chance that this gets blocked? There is. So there's several things. The vote is going to happen on Saturday night. 
It's a long time from now till Saturday. There's some house shenanigans. It's possible that the motion to vacate comes up. That would require the whole speakership thing. However, there's been some indications currently that the Democrats, at least some Democrats, would save Mike Johnson's speakership mm -hmm. just to make sure that there is no more chaos in the House. Josh Gottheimer, in particular, wants to fund Israel. That's right. You guessed it. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the reasons why he's decided to do that so. That guy, uh, Moskowitz, that's too. That's right, Moskowitz, Jared as Moskowitz well. Is so these individuals, there. look, I mean, there is enough room here to work with where I would say it is likelier than not. This is based upon the uh, sources that I've spoken to. Keep in mind, the, my sources, at least the people who talk to me, these are the people who don't want this stuff to pass. So when they tell me, I know it's actually likely on this one, I believe them because their analysis of the situation and the coalitions and all of that involved are that because you've got the Dems willing to work on Ukraine and the Republicans willing to work so hard on Israel, that it is allowing the corrupt bargain to uh, mm -hmm. go through without enough objection. You've also basically bought off the progressives with this piddly humanitarian aid and giving them enough let's say the Congressional Progressive Caucus and others, a, a decent portion of them are going to vote for it because it does include humanitarian aid for Gaza. And also, that gives an out to the Senate Democrats should that whenever this moves over to the Senate, even the people like Chris Van Hollen and all others, yeah. they've indicated they would vote for Israel aid. And <clears throat> one of the ways they can do it is, yeah, it sends weapons, but it sends humanitarian aid too, which is there is something sick, right, about paying for uh, the wounds of the people who are uh, people who are wounded by bombs that you're also selling. Yeah, you bomb well, and then you send them a loaf of bread. Yeah. The other thing is the problem in Gaza in terms of the humanitarian situation isn't a lack of availability of aid. Mm -hmm. There's hundreds of trucks that are still backed up at the borders. The problem is our great ally Israel blocking food and fuel and water from being able to come in. And there are a lot of indications that in spite of their claims that they're improving the humanitarian situation, that they're certainly not living up to the pledges that they made. And what's getting in is still wildly insufficient. So, you know, the, the humanitarian aid is ass covering so that people like Chris Van Hollen, who has made a big show of saying some really important things with regard to Gaza, can point to that to justify shipping more bombs to massacre women, children. I mean, some of the reports coming out about this is the largest cohort of children who have had amputations that we've ever seen. We're going to be maimed for life, the trauma that they're going to experience. And you're going to you're going to ship more more bombs to create more death, destruction, annihilation, trauma, et cetera. But don't worry, we'll we'll send you a loaf mm -hmm. of bread as well. That'll make it better. Yeah. Uh, look, it it's total chaos, and it is it is certainly possible that this may not pass. But right now, I would bet on it passing. And honestly, I should have never gotten my hopes up. We only got a three month reprieve. I should have known that they will net. They always win in the end. Oh, they the figure it out. The war machine every time. The military industrial complex, the neocons. No matter what you or I think. No matter the fact that the vast majority of the American people are not for any of this aid to Ukraine and to Israel, it doesn't matter. And it's just uh, and, and, and days after tax day, just a little Sick. bit too on the nose. Hey, guys, if you like that video, go to BreakingPoints.com, become a premium subscriber and help us build the best independent media organization on the planet. That's right. We're subscriber funded. We're building something new. We want to replace these failing mainstream media organizations. So again, to subscribe, it's BreakingPoints.com.